one percent of people in this country own one third of the wealth of this country. See, what do the really wealthy, really smart people know? They know what they want to do with their time. But why there are certain people who are able to make wealth and certain people who are not wealthy? I was reading on your website. The first thing it says that fifty thousand crore managed in the past. I was in a business where I would sit across the table from mm. some of the wealthiest folks in India, okay, and talk to them about how to manage their money, mm. uh, help them with that. You would meet people who had twenty five crores, thirty mm. crores, and then you suddenly start feeling that money is available. Like mm. there is enough money to go around. It's just that it is concentrated in the hands of a few, few people. people. Like India has. One of the craziest uh, Gini coefficients, which is the wealth inequality thing, right? Okay. One percent of people in this country own one third of the wealth of this country. That is incredible. Yeah. It's mind-boggling. It is disturbing. And that's when you started feeling like, how how can this be like more broad-based? Like, mm. how can more people have access to wealth? The other thing was like, what does what is like wealth for everyone, mm -hmm. right? Like, if I ask you, what does wealth mean for you, Raj? Having time in my hand. and i should not sacrifice that time by doing the things which i hate yeah that's exactly for me also that's what i discovered is the concept of wealth right a lot of us believe that wealth is things that you own hmm. um or the houses that you live in or the cars that you drive wealth is that what you don't see right hmm. you don't see real wealth yeah and it makes sense because every time you buy a new car you have less money in your account so you have less wealth Yeah. and i agree with you that wealth really is the freedom to do what you want when you want hmm. uh and therefore it's not about retiring it's not about like this i like i'm i'm not a big fan of this fire movement okay. right which oh, you're is not? which is retire early one thing i hear a lot of people say is i want to retire early hmm. i think what they really mean is that they want to do what they want when they want somebody who's working in a bank retirement might mean stepping back and writing a book yeah right that's not retirement like right? they want to do what they want when they want other things yeah right um and i think that truly for me is wealth and that's what i realized when i met the really wealthy folks in india they had the luxury of time hmm like they didn't have to get up in the morning uh, brush bathe have breakfast and dash to office <laughs> like they were like okay uh, today yeah. i want to think about this like what are you doing today i'm just thinking about this new thing that i'm going to work on right and i think that for me was a big realization that how that can change the destiny of india also in many ways mm -hmm. like what is the best thing about flipkart being bought by walmart it gave a lot of young people a lot of money to put in and start doing their stuff absolutely and they started so many new businesses exactly. right and that's becoming like a proper flipkart mafia now yeah exactly there's a flipkart mafia who's gone ahead and spawned these hundreds of startups potentially creating next tens of billions of dollars of yeah. wealth for themselves and the multiple people who will work for them that is really wealth and i think india needs Uh, certain things like this they need that we need that very very desperately every young person who's watching this or even in the room everybody's like hey i want to get rich quick mm. so that i could retire from my job i can retire from all the things right yeah. why do you think that is coming like why this is a mentality all of a sudden because aren't we all taught from the beginning that study hard mm. then go to get a good job or maybe start a business and then do it for rest of your life mm. like isn't that we are taught and mm. now that is getting challenged so why all of this everybody's thing you know i think that's a lot has got to do with india's own economic situation mm. and in the time that we grew up i'm an 80s kid we grew up in a time of scarcity that there were not enough jobs and there was a rat race to get into limited jobs that and therefore limited number of uh, engineering colleges medical schools etc and all of that so you're constantly in that race to uh, and i think as indians we generally couldn't discover ourselves uh, what our true potential is hmm. right and therefore when people make an association with work they it is an obligation it is something that you have to do right whereas actually i feel that if we had the luxury of wealth of space and time we could have discovered our talents better and differently much earlier on as well hmm 
and think, which is why people want to then retire like instead of like doing what they love because they probably couldn't discover what they really love we all live in society where we have been taught from from the beginning we mm. never been asked mm. so if you go to school teachers tell you hey this is how it needs to be done yeah. parents tell you this is the way yeah. your uncles advisors right everybody keeps telling you you go to a job you do a job as well most of the mm. uh, old bosses they're like this is how it needs to be done yeah. so you never been asked so you never question yourself and because yeah. you never question yourself you're not curious enough to find out what you really love yeah. and that's why you're like you know one day i'll be like leave everything and do it so is that do you feel is the reason because we have always thought never been asked absolutely and i think you know one of the things people get really nervous is when they're asked a question hmm. like uh, as a country we love when somebody solves things for us yeah like tells you that these are the three things if you do and i think we are now for the first time going through a little bit of a shift beginning to happen okay. thanks to social media creators uh where these questions and now our exposure to the how globally people think is much more than what it was say 10 years ago as somebody in finance i, I try and relate everything that we see in society to uh economy right mm-hmm. and like i personally feel there are three phases of india's wealth journey the first phase was income management right and a large part of our population is still doing that which is that uh here is a certain amount of salary you make you make your ends meet within that and you practically retire with nothing there was a survey and people were asked that how will you survive post retirement 60% people said my children will support me yeah okay uh so that was the era and in some cases still is the era of income management and i think when i say era it's not that uh it's like distinctive periods in time even today there are parts of our country which are dealing with that the second was this whole wealth management era uh and it's a very recent era it's like probably the last 4 5 years where people have for the first time realized that the import you have to save money and find ways of in deploying that money right uh like one interesting uh the first like bsc is it gives out the data of number of accounts that were opened in by investors right from we went from 1 crore to 2 crore accounts in about 1300 days which is about 3 and a half years we went from 9 crore to 10 crore accounts like that 1 crore was added in barely 90 days 3 months time wow so imagine 3 and a half years it took us to go from 1 crore to 2 crore accounts and from 9 to 10 which is adding that 1 crore took us only 3 months which means that people are for the first time now thinking about putting money some yeah. to work right but that is still a wealth management era hmm. where you have money uh, you just wanted to earn some return I think that the real uh, potential of India will get unlocked when we enter the wealth creation era. Okay. Where people start thinking how do I really create wealth and which is free up my time to do what I want to do when I want to do it. What I'm really excited about is we are seeing signs of that like entrepreneurs potential entrepreneurs there's this conversation you go to a cafe in Bangalore uh on the adjacent table somebody is pitching to the a new co-founder somebody is pitching to an investor i think parts of our country are entering that wealth creation era uh and i think that is the solve for where we are today so wealth creation technically you said it means it so is like you make enough money so that you buy out time to do things which you love yeah. and then you help other people to do the same thing yeah. so that you all collectively keep doing you all get in the creating zone rather than managing zone yeah yeah so like for me also like the first startup which we had uh which was 2008 to 2021 uh helped us create deserve in mm-hmm. many ways because it freed us up personally from the obligation of working in a job mm right uh, and today we can uh deploy whatever we have learned over the last couple of decades to be able to helping other people with their wealth creation journeys fair and i think which is why it's a huge leverage mm-hmm. for individuals and for the country so there's a misconception or probably right thing that 
a lot of wealthy people know what to do with their money is that right or wrong see what do the really wealthy really smart people know they know what they want to do with their time somebody who sold a business made 1000 crores they really know what they want to do next right mm. some people might do a, become a yoga monk some people might travel some people might start a new business some people might start a new foundation to help other people right so there are many other things they know what they want to do with their time yeah when it comes to money majority of them rely on expertise because at that level the stakes become so high you need somebody else to handle it hmm. for you like i have a construct in my head which is that there are low stake things and there are high stake things high stake things is health your money low stake things are what you want to wear where do you want to travel to vacation etc now on low stake things you don't need expertise because you can spend your time etc and figure that that out but when it comes to high stake activities that's when you really rely on expertise hmm. imagine like if i had a health issue would i should i google it and self medicate myself new advice against that and the same thing with money and i think the really wealthy folks have figured this out like look at the lar- the most wealthy folks in the world right they've set up these family offices mm. they've set up full teams to help them with their money even the people who are not as wealthy as them are relying on experts to handle it for them yeah so i think what do they spend time on when it comes to their money is figuring out whom they can trust with their money are there components of how you can find these people and what do they look for they are trying to figure out whether they can trust you and it's not about where you will invest their money it's not about how much fees will you charge them it's not about what is your scientific strategy and because that's all a given hmm. like wo to hona hi hai yeah. i mean if you don't like have transparency and if you don't have a logic around how you deploy people's capital you shouldn't be in the room to begin with but what they really figure out is can does this guy have the right ethical uh you know frameworks does this guy have the right intent at heart uh to grow my capital hmm. and which is why a lot of these discussions when it comes to uh money are discussions like these in, in most cases you're not discussing what you will do with it or what portfolio or which mutual fund or what stock or which bond that discussion doesn't come up it's more about these conversations that what sandeep like how how do you think i should be deploying my money or what do you think i should be doing and what they are assessing in that conversation is can i trust this person mm-hmm. and once they do that then it it creates a responsibility on the person that they've trusted right my like i wrote about this, this uh, recently uh you know there was there's this tech entrepreneur uh, i met him for the first time in early 2008 uh, and i said i want to come to your office he's like no i'm going to i'm we are talking about money so i want to meet you outside so we met at this there's this uh, hotel called sun and sand uh, in juhu at that point i don't know what it's called now so we met i remember the sunset was it was happening at that point and all we did all he did was talk to me about my pre- background like where did i grow up what did i do etc a few days later i get a call saying that you know i'm transferring my portfolio to you now you handle it all that happened a few years later we became close friends uh, i asked him uh, over a drink about that first meeting and said so he said i was figuring out whether i can really trust you hmm. and i said why because he said trust gives me leverage like now that i trust you i don't have to be involved at all Yeah. and it's opened up a whole part of my life and time which otherwise i would be micromanaging trying to figure out where to deploy and he he said that look you are going to do it full time that's all you do so i know you'll do a better job than me all i need to know is whether you have my interest at heart and i think that's like generally in life trust is crazy leverage i feel mm. like how we build our teams mm. right is also about trust that if you have a trusted person then you as a founder can step back and do so much more yeah and i think trust creates that sense of responsibility on both sides okay uh like 
if you are interested with something you will rise to the occasion and deliver for that person it's not about the economics yeah paisa to aapko wahan bhi banega kahin aur se bhi banega but you will go out of your way to help the guy whom you have tr- who has trusted you mm-hmm. and said that raj you are handling this for me i don't now care and imagine like that's like i have heard team members tell me this that you know i i'm under tremendous pressure I'm like why we have not like he said no because you've left it to me like you're not interfering in that and i think like and that for me is like something that i really believe is is something to spend time on like so we, th- we should be spending time on figuring out who we can trust why do you think certain people depicts more trust or certain brands depict more trust because Good and certain people not on trust right and it's like a very deep uh topic to delve into i feel like we all are looking in general in life for hacks hmm. right trust is one of those things where there are no hacks right there's no like this if you do this somebody will trust you if you do this somebody will trust you trust is one of those things that you have to live on a daily basis and then it compounds and when it compounds it snowballs into something very massive look at the tata brand for example in india right it is trusted because people believe that over time over hundreds of years or maybe a uh, many decades they have done right by the consumer by the various stakeholders that and therefore today that brand commands significant uh, trust so i think trust is again one of those compounding things that you have to keep investing into if you want to build it as an asset right so which means that on a daily basis take those decisions which are in the interest of the stakeholder you're talking to so if you're let's say you have an employee in your company like how are you doing right by him or her on a daily basis and not just like at the appraisal cycle similarly if you have a customer as a business you're faced with so many different decisions at some point right where you can cut quality increase prices increase the margin and so on but the thing is that do you take those decisions when you are under pressure or do you say no i will not break the compounding of trust i will do right by my user or client or Uh, whoever is consuming my service on a regular basis so that is i think at the top the long term trust creation As, when it comes to people however on the other hand there are like certain types of people you trust people like in our business on the investing side it's about are you willing to listen to the user the client the person who is placing money with you because if you're not listening then uh you are just projecting your own biases onto their portfolio we will go to a doctor there are some doctors which are whom you instinctively trust because about uh, it's about the way how they communicate what yeah. you have right yeah like and the best of doctors by the way can you can go in and they'll tell you acha uh, quietly examine you write out a prescription and send you out mm. but you'll be like wait a minute like what just happened like i'm not sure like did he actually <laughs> figure me? but and they might have like but then there's other another doctor who will actually explain to you what happened right so mm. those are like individually uh category mm-hmm. level differentiators but at the overall level i think trust is a compounding game yeah so would you feel that people who are highly trusted are the ones who attract wealth more see again wealth is one of those things it's not a race right it's mm. not like a sprint where you have to get wealthy by the time you're x years and so on okay uh it's about again that same thing flexibility to do what you want when you want and there are cases where people attract wealth in a very short span of time but are they really able to uh retain wealth i think that is uh, a function of how continually trusted they are mm. because there are times when you make money in the short run and then you look look back and today let's say 10 years later that person is you don't hear about them yeah. anymore and the reason is that they couldn't retain that trust they did something some shortcuts along the way which caused them to lose that uh, wealth so i think trust the uh trust is something that will allow you to accumulate but also retain uh not wealth a lot of wealth why do you think certain people are wealthy and certain people are not like because everybody wants to create wealth yeah i'm sure that nobody gets up 
in the morning and be like yaar mujhe nahi paise kamana hai hmm. right everybody is thinking about it reading about it finding ways to do it they're hmm. going to the job in a hope that they'll be able to do it hmm. they're doing starting their businesses to do the same thing hmm. but why there are certain people who are able to make wealth and certain people who are not wealthy if you look at uh, a lot of mutual funds and you look at the funds performance like right? i was recently looking at a data that one asset management company put out hmm. and they said that uh, the performance of this fund has been over many years 19% annualized and i was like wait a minute like this fund must have really made a lot of money for people so we looked at the data of how much money actual investors made in that particular fund we looked at when money came in when money went out and we modeled that to figure out and actual returns of investors in that fund was 12 to 13% which is 6% lower than what the fund actually made i call this the expertise gap a lot of times when it comes to managing your money you need somebody to hold your hand and tell you and help you with what is right at which point of time mm-hmm. otherwise our emotions kick in and take control of that situation right so i think that for me is uh, is the reason why some people continuously make wealth with their investment and some people don't which is the use of real expertise is that happening or not uh when it comes to seri- high stakes things like money when it comes to life i have a different theory everything in life compounds i like i wish and i try and do that with my kids i try and explain to them this concept of making money on money which is essentially compounding over time right because trust compounds as we spoke but also everything that you do in your career also compounds right mm. sometimes there's a temptation that for the same job i'm getting 15% higher in another company maybe i should make a switch and if you look at it in a completely dispassionate rational basis maybe that is the right thing but what you are breaking is the reputation that you created in company a when you're switching to company b you're starting reputation afresh so you're breaking the compounding of that reputation Hmm. right and that then hurts in the long run so when people ask me should i like i have this new job offer should i take up etc my first thing is to them is that ask yourself are you breaking compounding in any way form uh, that could hurt you in the in the long run and i think like that for me is like a big lesson of wealth creation like don't break the thread of compounding in any any field of yeah. your work and the problem with compounding is when you're living that moment it doesn't feel like a progress yeah right because it's like 0.01% on a daily basis but uh, over time it becomes something magical and very large there's this amazing book one of the most favorite things i've read uh, ever is this book called range, range. by david yeah. epstein which is as you know about uh, generalists Generalist. uh, and what are generalists they've tried different things but over time they've accumulated uh insight in that field right mm-hmm. like we talk about Roger Federer who uh, uh t- played tennis much later in life and played a lot of other sport right he was building a sense in i mean not consciously maybe but around sport right which then got channeled into tennis and once they, he got into tennis he built on top of uh, that mm-hmm. right he played for many years after that i would think that uh if it's co- conscious if it's thoughtful it is potentially compounding too and so. here's here's how i look about it you give an ex- beautiful example let's say if you are leading a team in finance mm. then you're leading a team in ph- pharmaceutical then you're leading a team in let's say law your compounding would be in leading in leadership in, in the leadership and i'll trust you on that yeah. not trust you on pharmaceutical like absolutely. or health or money or anything absolutely else. so that's how that's what you meant like the best eating. ceos are able to switch across companies hmm. because they have figured out leadership they have figured out how to help people deliver to their best potential and that's their compounding game so for wealth like people who end up getting wealthy hmm. are a who understand that there's a price of expertise which they have to pay yeah. so either they become the expert or they find out the expert who can help them do absolutely stuff, 100% right? and b is understanding consciously the power of compounding in every field of their life not only just money correct because whether it's talent whether it's the field or the domain expertise or just trust 
or relationship anything Absolutely. at all if yeah. you understand that consciously you you become this person yeah who would uh, you would attract a lot of things in life which will make it easy for you to become a wealthy person absolutely and you know which was i was telling my wife the other day that uh, our education system is split into subjects right mm. instead what if there it was split into concepts right and compounding being one concept mm. uh, and it's i feel like it's the most important thing that uh, drives progress like we look at human history there are so many small decisions or small things that were discovered along the way that made human beings what they are today right you look sapiens uh, yeah. by you will know that he's written about this that these are small things which at that point in time doesn't seem like such a big event right yeah. and that's how you will feel when in your daily lives also even in your portfolios right mm. because uh, one of the things about most portfolios is people are seeking excitement right that uh, yaar kal wohi वैल्यू था आज उससे दस रुपया ऊपर है वॉट इज हैपन दिस इज नॉट एक्साइटिंग एक्सेट्रा लेट्स डू समथिंग मोर एक्साइटिंग वॉट डू दे डू दे ब्रेक कंपाउंडिंग एंड मूव टू दिस न्यू इंस्ट्रूमेंट और समथिंग विच इज पोटेंशली फ्रेश एंड अगेन यू ब्रोकन कंपाउंडिंग सो आई थिंक इट्स अबाउट जस्ट दैट दैट अलाउ कंपाउंडिंग टू प्ले आउट टिम ओवन स्पोक अबाउट दिस दिस इज कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द इंस्टेंट ग्रेटिफिकेशन मॉकी right which is sitting somewhere in your brain trying to make you f- do things which will make you happy at that point in time mm. and almost always they break compounding so i feel education also has this one problem mm. that we have never we always are taught about past mm. we never talk about future mm. like there should be a class on future like what would you want to build mm. or what would you, how would you want to imagine your 10 years from now or mm. what would you do like just challenge the curiosity and possibility so yeah. that it helps in nurturing the thought of innovation hmm. rather than just finding patterns of the past no absolutely like you know i was at uh, singularity university in the bay area hmm. i think in 2019 and it was an eye opening thing for me i think in many ways that contributed to me starting deserve uh there was this uh, so you know we were a bunch of like 50 60 folks and uh there was this uh, futurism class okay? okay and there was no reading material nothing given in advance so we didn't know what we were going in for the professor walked in uh, she divided the team and the group into like 10 groups and said that you pick one concept and explore that towards a uh, next level and the next level and so on so i'll give you an example uh she gave my team the concept of driverless cars hmm. right now what does driverless cars mean driverless cars one way of thinking about them is that you won't need to drive anymore therefore you will have free time but there is also another angle to it which is that if there are driverless cars will you need to own a car or not hmm. right so that is the next level effect because if it's a driverless car there is no shortage of drivers anymore yeah. and cars are easily available why do we have a problem getting an uber or an ola is because the driver drivers. is not available yeah. not the car is not available right so if drivers were not a bottleneck then you will have any amount of cars available therefore the moment you walk out you will get a car therefore you will not own a car mm-hmm. what will it mean for companies which lend against cars and so on so forth mm-hmm. right so uh and that for me was a very eye opening thing in that you look at one thing and explore what it means and i wish like our kids were enabled to think like that yeah. like take uh the like button on instagram right and then what like so what will happen if you if the if the designer who introduce a like button uh if you he was asked okay so what will happen so people will change like so what will happen so people will focus spend more time on instagram so what will happen they will try and look better on instagram and so on so yeah. forth right imagine the implication of that one feature which was a like button mm-hmm. right so just this having this thought process of what will happen next yeah. like that one like button will will breed an entire generation which is which is wanting validation constantly on everyday basis and absolutely themselves. absolutely so just having that thought process is crazy yeah. yeah so also 
in the wealth creation process right mm. i I've, i've been a big believer of this and i'm sure you would agree to this as well that the maximum wealth is created by investing in future not investing in today mhm right mm-hmm. you can make average returns by investing in today but mm-hmm. if you invest in the future mm-hmm. right you can make crazy returns so let's say for example jeff bezos mm-hmm. so he was not he was working on amazon 20 years from now mm-hmm. right 20 year, 20 years ago facebook he was working on the technology mm-hmm. 20 years ago right so everyone who works on the future mm-hmm. ends up getting dis- disproportionate advantage over other people and making wealth yeah right but when you look at a lot of wealth managers and wealth creations right they all look at data and patterns of what's working what's not working yeah right look at the look at try to understand the logic the quant the mechanics mm. all of these things yeah so what do you feel is a better way to create wealth like is it to take bets on future because when you think about future it's very less logic it's a lot of gut feeling and maybe pattern behavior shift which you have seen i think that's a amazing question and i think that's something that for us informs portfolio strategy also uh what do you look at when you decide if you want to invest in a pms or a mutual fund and invariably the first data point you look at is how that strategy did in the last one year last three years last five yeah. years and so on right there is a very small disclaimer at the end which is that past performance is no guarantee of future returns yeah. right and actually i think that should be the main thing and the re- old returns should be in small font so we did a great job of introducing that disclaimer and yet i don't think we pay enough attention to it right a lot of times we are investing into instruments funds fund managers asset classes which have performed in recent times the recency bias and invariably you are ending up buying a thing which has already done its thing right it's moved already yeah. and now you are coming into it like i was looking at the inflows that happened into bitcoin uh the amount of inflows that we got in the last 6 months uh, or 6 months ago was much more than what they got in the collective history of uh, the currency yeah which means majority of people who've come in into this currency have lost money now right uh, and why did they come in because they were looking at past returns i think great portfolio managers fund managers wealth managers look for patterns and figure out what performed in what kind of economic environment right okay so if a particular fund manager was doing really well when interest rates were low uh will he or she perform when interest rates are rising is a question mark like and we we'll, when we look take asset allocation calls we also end up looking at what is the stage of the economy in right one of the things we find a lot of similarity is 10 12 years ago when our economy was in a similar state what it is now right okay uh and therefore to say that maybe the markets will behave as they did then over the next few years rather than assuming that what has happened in the past will necessarily recur another like interesting thing that happened especially on the back of 2021 is that everyone started extrapolating 2021 in various ways in life right we said that a certain set of stocks and portfolios have done really well they will continue to do well we assume that the digital adoption that happened in that year will continue to uh, be that and we are realizing to a, a lot of surprise that people want to get back to regular life yep yeah uh, uh, we sort of assumed that uh, we will want to meet people only online online but, but now people are hating it and there's a study done in states huh. where they're done it on gen z hmm. so 72% gen z 72% gen z Mm. said that they want to get back offline they want to go to events they want to do the concerts they want to meet their friends offline they want to have chill parties yeah nobody's interested in forget online meetings they're not interested in watching netflix wow they're like i'm done with this i want to go out and be with friends and 72% is crazy number based on whatever the size would be absolutely and that shows up in the stock prices of a lot of these companies right it the assumption that what happened in the recent past will continue to happen in the same way i think and if if there is any evidence of that that is required it doesn't work like that is 2021 to 
and which is why you we end up urging investors like don't look at past performance rare view investing never works like it's always almost ending up in an accident in the future but unfortunately that's what really What happens it? because it is easy to visualize and sell like it's one data if imagine i were to tell you that okay i've done all of this analysis and this is what i believe you will say that's your belief but there's this real data of last year's performance yeah and that's hard data and this is a belief hmm. right and invariably the human mind wants certainty so then you chase the hard data and that's why we don't end up making the money that we want to like the same nyu professor hmm. he quoted that you know what who are the ones mm. who make maximum wealth mm. what is the indicator mm. which makes the maximum wealth mm. and how do you judge that mm. and they all say is the story and the conviction of the story absolutely and it's like and like everybody started laughing it was yeah. like how can you say this yeah, what yeah. is that but he's like if you look at he's a finance professor yeah he's a so finance he's a numbers professor. guy numbers guy like he talks about <laughs> capital allocation cash flow all of these things right. right and past performances and he said but if you look at if you try to chase patterns mm. and you look at the past data you're only going to be able to beat that mm. or be exactly at a position where you'll be making the same amount mm. if you want to make insanely extraordinary results mm. it's the story which sells mm. it's the story which you believe in mm. and that story should be backed by logic it should not be like yeah. hey कि ये ऐसा हो जाएगा बस हवा में सब उड़ने लग जाएंगे लाइक दैट शुड नॉट कम इट्स अ इट शुड बी बैक्ड बाय अ लॉजिक एंड इफ इट मेक्स सेंस आई थिंक दैट्स व्हाट मेक्स यू द मैक्सिमम वेल्थ द फैक्ट दैट इलॉन गॉट सो मेनी पीपल टू बिलीव इन द स्टोरी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स एनेबल्ड द इकोसिस्टम ऑफ इलेक्ट दैट इज नीडेड अराउंड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स टू गेट क्रिएटेड राइट बिकॉज टेस्ला डजेंट ऑपरेट इन अ आइसोलेटेड एनवायरमेंट दे नीड सप्लायर्स right how will a supplier invest in a new project unless they buy into his story mm. that he will uh, produce x number of cars every year right uh, and i think uh, how like life is a lot about storytelling uh, i wish that was one concept beside compounding that we were taught that how important communication and storytelling is in yeah. your in your day to day work yeah and i think I think every good story has three elements in them. Mm -hmm. One is the promise of future. Mm -hmm. Second is the logic and the understanding of the behavior, which is giving you an insight of the future. Yeah. And third is relatability. If I can't relate with you or your problems, then you won't be able to see the same vision which I am imagining. So I mean, if you look at it as a Tesla story as well, right? Mm. Nobody. Cared jack shit about electric vehicles yeah. until he said that this is gonna be cooler and faster. Yeah. So like everybody who wanted like a cooler cars yeah. or faster cars bought into this and they kind of believed in it. Correct. Right. So Imagine the pre-bookings that happened at that point of time was crazy, right? Yeah. He got capital to build cars when he had only a story yeah. to tell. <laughs> there's concentrated wealth creation and there's diversified wealth creation. Okay. Concentrated wealth creation is the high risk game that you play. and a lot of that is around storytelling and believing in those stories that's a uh, concentration that's a concentration like okay. uh, if i really believe in the tesla story i'll put all my money yeah. in tesla and may make a lot of wealth out of it but there's a probability attached to that right? yes it's high not risk, a certainty risk. right whereas there's this diversified where you potentially believe in many different stories and create a diversified portfolio around that hmm. and uh the probability of this uh is potentially higher yeah i think we're getting getting back to the original point rich attracts rich gets richer money attracts money and yeah. one of the re major reasons would be this mm. that because you are secured mm. now you can place high bets and have concentrate in bets yeah. versus when you're trying to because when you're secured and certain about your max to max kya hi ho jayega mm. then you play high bets right versus when you're not secure you try to play secured and certain bets but actually the reverse happens there is when you have smaller amount of money you tend to believe that if i do this one thing then i will uh, you know i'll be very rich i used to walk to school and along the way there was this lottery shop you know a lottery shop is a very 
interesting place because it's first of all very colorful right there is this big mast which is colorful so colors attract attention so you hmm. and these tickets are laid out and every day i would see like 8 to 10 people uh you know leaning over a big board of lottery tickets trying to pick out and stuff and i used to wonder like what are they looking for now, how do they know that this ticket will do but they would spend a lot of time figuring that yeah. out and a lot of them potentially would gamble away a lot of their life earnings there because of the hope that this will make me rich hmm. whereas probably what they should be doing at that point is just investing in diversified stuff right what do you think are the like top 3 concepts which everybody who wants to create wealth hmm. should understand in their life so one is probability okay i'll give you an example let's say if i uh, buy a lottery and i can get a million dollars uh and i say that the chance of winning that lottery is say 1% that means effective outcome is say $10,000 for me hmm. right because 1 million multiplied by 1% $10,000 on the other hand there is this investment that i can make that will certainly give me $20,000 right which one should i pick and humans are inherently hopeful creatures right and that's why we got to where we are so we would probably pick the lottery yeah right because it's promise of 1 million it's promise of 1 million right do you think we should chase incremental results and not exponential results so uh, if you are secure in your life and have made a certain amount of capital by all means go to exponential exponential results, results. like when do people start angel investing mm-hmm. right when they've made their money they have a couple of houses they have enough capital to run their family home etc and so on and then they start investing in angel investing yeah right it's not the first thing that you do yeah right so there is uh, there is this whole probability thing and i feel like i also need to figure out how to explain that to my kids better right uh because uh if i were to be able to explain that they'll be able to take life decisions much better right. than they are the second is which i feel is about this dealing with uncertainty Mm-hmm. right uh because a lot of stress that we see in life around us is because of uncertainty a lot of us can't live with uncertainty live with this feeling that we it's okay not to know what's going to happen next right and which impacts our risk taking appetite and which impacts our ability to grow as a nation also right entrepreneurial nations uh are inherently risk takers because they are okay with uncertainty yeah. it's okay not to know everything right but when we have been taught that okay do this five steps to this learn this do that etc guidelines uh, uh notes cheat codes cheat sheets you know we've got used to certainty right mm. uh and the third is i think a more a personality thing that i feel that i am also still learning is dealing with insecurity okay like uh which is the fact that you may not know everything and that's all right right so i wish like probability uncertainty insecurity were things we were made cognizant about and probably would have It's and, really helpful and all three if you look at like the most successful entrepreneurs they've all got in this thing okay so most of the people who have built crazy tech products they went for the exponential risk hmm. when they knew that yaar zyada zyada kya hoga flop ho jayega na wapas 50000 ki naukri kar lenge correct so they were secure in their head that yeah. hey max 50000 job i'm going to get it back again correct right so hmm. the security came yeah so their incremental level was sorted and that's why they went for the exponential result Correct. and they tried to do something right that was um, forget tech like even the management students or anyone who feels like if i'm a sales person kuch to bech hi lunga main 30 40000 mere ko mil hi jayenge i'm not going to go down Correct. down the road that's why Correct. i can place high bets that's one second is uncertainty <clears throat> every entrepreneur understands that hmm. until or unless there's a play of uncertainty and i there's that's a there's a phase of uncertainty and i cross that i won't be able to make exponential results in my life yeah so yeah. we all 
admit that yeah. that yes i know that it's uncertain but guess what i'm still going to get over it Correct. okay and third thing insecurity i feel it's good to have insecurity yeah because like it pushes you to do more like most of the people i have met they all will tell that i'm not the best person to do this mm. i probably don't even know how to do this mm. but i'll figure it out so every time you're insecure about certain thing instead of saying impossible say i don't know yet so for example yeah. if i'm insecure about certain thing let's say i'm 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 insecure that i don't have the right amount of talent to build a startup mm. i can say that it's impossible i've just not built for it mm. right or mm. i can say I'm built for it. I just don't know yet how to do that. Absolutely, and so, that's channeling insecurity correctly because you're saying, okay, I need to learn more about yes. it, right? Yeah. So instead of just discarding it by saying it's not for me, absolutely, saying that it's not for me yet. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one day it'll be for me. Yeah. And you know, I think it's about the vocabulary also, Raj. Like, if somebody were to tell me there is this concept of insecurity, hmm. uh, as a kid, that this is what you are feeling. and it is okay and this is how you can deal with it or this is how you can think about it it can in itself make a lot of difference hmm. sometimes you don't know that you're feeling insecurity yeah till many years later when you're more mature and you look back at that time say so was i too insecure was i should uh and i think this vocabulary uh, around these concepts i think uh, sometimes giving a word to it is hmm. is important yeah so it there's a there's a framework right If you want to make something common, hmm. start saying the word. Yeah, like it starts by saying the word because until unless you won't say the word, you won't give it a name. Yeah, you won't know what that feeling is called. Correct. So like fear and excitement, right? Yeah. So, so when when you're nervous and you're scared, yeah. you feel the same thing versus yeah. when you're excited. Yeah. Like your body doesn't know whether you're fear, like you're Correct. scared or nervous, right? Yeah. It's just the conditioning from the childhood. Yeah. which tells you that these are the things i need to be scared about and these are the things i need to be excited about excited about yeah right. yeah because of probably the chemical in your brain is the same yeah. at, at yeah. that yeah. point so yeah. i was speaking to one skydiver like i did skydiving a while ago mm. and i was speaking to him like i'm scared mm. you know when i look out of the plane i mean i'm excited about the idea that i want to skydive mm. i want to jump it but the moment you open that door mm. i get scared like do i need to jump or no yeah. and he's like the moment you open the door i get excited that i need to jump Uh, and it's, it's like our body is feeling the same thing yeah we both are shivering we both don't know what's going to happen mm. our heart is beating faster yeah. it's just i've been trained to look at it as excitement you have been look at trained at look at it fear no so, i think it's like the different words at different time conditions in a different way and i think that's this link to the earlier point of storytelling the power of words like you know at in deserve you know the what is the job of so we have a customer support team we call them member partners that in itself the fact that they are a partner to our mm. users uh, and secondly was their job their job is to delight the user yeah right and the moment we say it that way uh, and when we explain the job description we put it out like that you're a member partner your job is to delight the user and and some of that stuff then you don't have to teach people that this is what you need to do yeah because the moment you say delight you know that you have to go over and above mm. right So I think I words have crazy power. Oh yes! Instead of saying that you need to attend calls, <laughs> you yeah. need to yeah, yeah just address problems. Yeah. Then yeah. you're not worrying about that. How many tickets you closed, mm. etc. They know that my job is to delight, delight the, customer. the customer. Okay. Last question, which we ask everybody mm. uh, on our podcast is: What do you feel? Where is this? What is the next big opportunity for India? The biggest. concept that human beings created which is unique to us is the concept of money hmm. right and as an economy develops money becomes more and more central because we are now moving away from the very basic day to day stuff right now as the country develops our food etc is taken care of so probably the agrarian economy is stable it's it's reasonable it covers everyone right but you have more money in the hands of people so any business or any those businesses where flow of money dictates how that business will do i think that for me is one thing that we should watch out for very closely so give me an example like a uh, credit or lending for example mm. is something that 
we are yeah. very excited about again insurance. because money is flowing insurance our own business wealth or investing uh, these are businesses where the currency or the commodity with on the top of which it is operating is money and with surplus economic capital i think those businesses will do really well yeah makes sense yeah nice thanks a lot for doing this man really, yeah, really loved having a conversation with you no. i hope you did too <laughs> i i really love the the concept of figuring out uh <laughs> i i think it shows humility in many ways that you're is you're not preaching you are learning along the way so i think that in itself is something incredible and congratulations on that thank you thank you the whole idea is to genuinely get the right people and learn from them because mm -hmm. so i've been a believer of this and i keep fighting with my dad about this right i feel that dad you know what me and someone who i feel as a role model mm -hmm. we don't have a difference yeah like we're same people mm -hmm. it's just they know something which i don't know yet Mm -hmm. So I need to ask them and find out, ask the right question or maybe the clear question, and they will teach me something. And if I execute that right, mm -hmm. maybe I'll reach that level. So it's just always about like I'm this curious person who wants to learn from everyone who I feel is doing right. Yeah, incredible. And I think I wish like that was something that was taught in schools that uh, that you need to learn from everyone. Uh, we are all figuring out. Yeah, even today, everyone is. <laughs> <laughs>